Okay, well, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming today. Today, our guest is our longtime foodie friend here in Southern California, uh, Christina Exenos. Did yeah. I say it right? Yeah, Zenos. Zenos, finally. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I always get names wrong. Sorry about oh, that. God. Well, we are here to, to uh, celebrate her cookbook, Op Opa, uh, Healthy Greek Cookbook. But let me tell you a little bit about Christina. Um, Christina, um, Christina, Christina, Christina is a professional chef, cookbook author, and journalist based here in Los Angeles. I think she resides in Pasadena. Her company is Sweet Greek Professional Chef Services, tantalizing palates throughout the city with full culinary services, cooking classes, and Greek-themed pop-up dining experience. You should share some of the ones that you have coming yeah. up during your presentation. Yeah. Um, and which she has been featured in like food and wine magazines and some other outlet publications as well. Um, she is one of uh, five members of the prestigious La Dames de Scofier, uh, who was a featured chef um, and the first lady of Greek cuisine, where she dated a dinner um, of the cuisine of the Southern Aegean Islands. Um, at the James Beard House uh, last year in the spring. That's pretty cool. And she was also featured as a culinary expert on the Cooking Channel's television show program, Food uh, Fact or Fiction, if you've ever seen that. Super fun. <laughs> uh, also, let's see here. Um, she is a journalist and has worked as a travel uh, correspondent for Forbes travel guide and, an, and an on, on, as an online editor for the SoCalPulse.com in Southern California for over 10 years, documenting the thriving restaurant scene in and around Los Angeles. She continues to write for uh, a suite of their publications and also uh, freelances food and travel pieces for a number of publications. But as, as you know her as coming uh, here to Melissa's many a times in supporting our local foodie community to share her passion of Greek cooking. And she'll give, she's going to give you a little bit of background um, because she's a frequent uh, flyer to the Greek islands and Crete and whatnot. Um, our guest and happy to have her here. And the first time we've actually hosted a Greek cookbook, um, Christina. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, Robert. Thank you to all the chefs who created that wonderful feast that you guys enjoyed. I hope that gave you a really good overview of the recipes that are in Opa, the Healthy Greek Cookbook. I'm the co-author of this cookbook. My writing partner, Theo Stefan, asked me to come on board a couple years ago, and the book was published in 2017, and we're really, really proud of it. Um, we wanted to make a cookbook that people would use that was approachable. Um, we both grew up in Dayton, Ohio. When I was writing this cookbook, I well, when I was writing my recipes for this cookbook, I wanted to create them thinking of my family in Chicago and in Ohio, and I wanted to create my um, recipes with the ingredients that were accessible to them. Um, times have changed. We don't have a lot of time anymore to spend, you know, three or five hours in the kitchen making run one recipe. So for the recipes that I created, I wanted to streamline them a little bit so people would have time to cook because I really want people to start cooking and, and, you know, I mean, takeout's great, but we want to cook healthy. We want to cook for our families. So that's kind of my philosophy behind the recipes that I created for the cookbook. Um, we're going to start out with a demo. Um, today on the spread, we enjoyed the baked zucchini patties. Um, in Greek, they're called kolokitho kefdedis. They're one of my favorite recipes out of the book. I changed them a little bit because in, if you eat them in Greece, they're traditionally fried. And we wanted to lighten them up for the cookbook. Um, so, And they're also easier to make um, baking them because you don't have to stand over you know, your cast iron Dutch oven frying something or your deep fryer. So we're going to put them all onto this tray and bake them up. So we start out by shredding the zucchini. Um, the chefs here have done most of the prep work for me, but I'll just show you kind of how I start doing it. Um, you can use a food processor to do this, but I prefer using like a box grater or a handheld grater like this because I really like the texture of the zucchini, um, the way it comes out like this. 
But when you're making, you know, 400 of them, definitely use your food processor because it will take you all day unless you have an army of people helping you. Um, these patties or fritters are common throughout Greece, but they're mainly common in the islands. Um, my family is from the island of Crete, which is the big island in the south. Um, and then my other half of my family is from Milos, which is um, in a, a southern Aegean island just above Crete. I've been cooking for all my life. Um, my earliest memory is my grandmother teaching me how to make domades. I think we're all um, familiar with shep grape leaves. Um, Greek people are hyper local eaters. They, you know, much, many of them still grow much of their own produce or they shop at their neighborhood village markets. Um, when my grandmother immigrated to the States, she had a huge, huge garden in her backyard. And when she taught me how to make domadas, the first thing I had to do was go out to the backyard and pick all the grape leaves that we were using for the recipe. So, so what I would do now, so we have the zucchini all in here and it's in a colander and then I'm going to sprinkle some salt, and the salt is going to help the zucchini release the water, because zucchini is mostly water, so it's going to help that release. I would let it sit for about 20 minutes and let all the water drain out. You can squeeze it. Um, if you have a cheesecloth, which is this wonderful tool right here, um, I would line the colander with a cheesecloth or a kitchen towel, and then you can really just pick it up and squeeze all the moisture out of it. Um, if you're making spanakopita, which is a Greek spinach pie, this is another great way to drain your spinach for the pie. But for purposes of this demo, we're going to pretend this is already drained, and then we're going to put it into a big mixing bowl. So all this beautiful zucchini goes right there. And then we're going to just add in the rest of the ingredients. We have feta cheese. And then we have a hard salty cheese. Um, in the cookbook, I recommend using um, cafelotiri or cafelo graviera. It's very similar to a, pecor a pecorino romano that would probably be easier for us to get here unless you're shopping at a Greek or Mediterranean market. Um, we have green onions that are sliced thin. And then we have dill. Um, a lot of people, I feel like dill is a very polarizing herb. Um, it really is traditional in this, in this dish, but if you don't like dill, you can use, you know, make it to your taste. Use what herb you're partial to. Basil would go well. Mint would go really, really well in this. Sometimes I make them with dill and mint. Um, oregano would be fine as well. So we're going to put a little garlic in there just because I like a little garlic. And then um, the breadcrumbs are going to help bind the patties together. Um, you can use any kind of breadcrumbs. I really like the texture and the color of the panko. So there's panko right there. And then we're going to use two eggs. But we're going to start out just by using one. And then I'm going to kind of see how the texture is. Because you want them to be on the drier side. You don't want them to be really soggy. Because then you'll have soggy zucchini patties. So I'm going to mash them up and I love using my hands for this so I'm going to put this glove on does anyone have any questions so far mm -hmm. yeah so I'm just gonna start with mixing it's whole yeah you don't have to peel it I don't often um, peel zucchini I like I the skins of the zucchini are perfectly fine to eat um, with eggplant, you, sometimes you may want to do it. I don't often do it with that too, but I would be more apt to peel the skin of the eggplant rather than zucchini. Yeah? I make this, uh, I make my breakfast and take myself and make a lot of Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I use zucchini to make it Uh-huh. Um, and I just grate it and then squeeze it my whole cell. Yeah. Yeah. If you had the time, that's exactly what you would want to do. Yeah. Uh, you, I would let it drain. You know, it, taking the moisture out is really going to help you get a nice structured um, patty for for this case, or if you wanted to do a ball. Or, but yeah, that would be the best way to do it. You want it to be as dry as possible. So yeah, you want to you know squeeze out. 
That's why I wanted to see like the moisture content in here right now because if it were a little wet, then I would have, I probably would not have added the second egg. So I just kind of, but yeah. So it just, you, you can compensate um, with the, the egg or if you made it really dry, then you wanna use both eggs. But yeah, if you can let it drain for, you know, an hour or so or all day. <laughs> Yeah, so this is almost there. Um, opa, opa is an exclamation. So, you know, if you're, if you're dancing and you jump in, in the air, you say opa. If you drop a dish, you say opa. If people are saying opa. If you light your saganaki on fire, you say opa. So, <laughs> so it's like, it's kind of like, um, I mean, it's an exclamation, so it can, it can mean awesome or all right or fantastic. Um, it's just a, it's a Greek exclamation, yeah. So, all right, so this is pretty much done. If you like feta like me, um, the recipes in the book that, you know, the feta is always just a guideline. You can always add a little more. Um, make it, again, make it to your taste. So we're going to start spooning them out. Um, a trick even though you're using the parchment paper, um, I like to just make sure it's, the patties aren't gonna stick. So I'm just gonna brush a little olive oil on this parchment paper. If you have baking spray, you can use that to make it easy. Um, but I, you just don't want them sticking. So I'm going to do that. It's, you know, if you forget, to, I, you know, half the time I forget to do this, but it always helps me do. Um, yeah, you can use a salt pad, yeah. Mine get, like, I love silk hats, but it's, it's, mine get really greasy, yeah. But, um, but yes, yes, definitely, and it's more environmentally friendly. So I'm using an ice cream scoop because I want them to all be the same size. And then I'm going to initially scoop them into a ball, and I'm gonna kind of make a ball, and then put it down, and then just lightly flatten it. So I, I started cooking by, um, I partnered, well, I became a chef on an online platform called Eat With. And Eat With um, hosts dining experiences all over the world. And so chefs in, in every different country will list whatever dining event, cooking class, food tour they have going on, and um, they list it. And then if you're, you know, wherever you are, you can look up on Eat With to see what dining experience is happening. You can buy tickets and, and go to these events. So when I was in cooking school, my friend told me about them, and I thought that would be a really great way to dip my toe in and decide if I actually like cooking for people. And so I started throwing these pop-up dinners and after about a year, I decided I really liked it and um, I started my personal chef business. But these zucchini patties, I always, always have on my appetizer spread um, for my pop-ups and I'm actually having one on Saturday if you guys are interested. Um, but they are the, always the first thing to go on my appetizer spread, everyone loves them. Um, they're vegetarian, they taste really, really good, and they go well. You guys had two dips today. You had the fiery feta dip, you had the avocado scordoya, and they go well with both of those, but they also go really, really well with um, tzatziki, which is um, the yogurt sauce. So, so here we go. Hi, guys. You can, yeah. It's um that would be a really fun way to change it up. You could totally grate like butternut squash or yellow summer squash, and that would make that would that would be completely fine in this recipe. You could even do it with carrots. Um, I think everything would be the same. I haven't tested it, but I think it would be the same. And I, mean, I would think that I haven't made latkes before, but I would think that you have to fry latkes. I think no. So yeah, I think it would be similar to that too. So. We're doing this, and then if you want, if you're like me and you like to batch cook, I would take it to this point, and then I would, you could freeze, I would, I actually would, you know what? When I've made these before, I do cook them. Normally, when I cook Greek food, I take it to the point right before cooking, and I freeze it with like my casseroles, my moussaka, my pastizo, but for these, actually, I would cook them before, and then I would um, put them in like an airtight, like a, freezer bag, and then we separate them by layers and freeze them flat. And um, they, they last for like three months. So you can always have a batch of them in your freezer, and then you can just heat them up when you have company coming over. You don't have to use feta cheese. I mean, 
it is a Greek cookbook and I would say feta cheese is the most common of Greek cheeses, but if you don't have access to feta cheese, you could use like a, like a really nice tangy goat cheese. That would be fine, absolutely. Or if you're vegan and you wanna make these vegan, um, as long as it doesn't have a higher moisture content, you could use, um, if you make vegan feta cheese, you could use a vegan feta cheese, absolutely. Um, where was I? All right, so we're making these. Oh yeah, so Greek people, we cook in batches. We always have extra food around. We always have a box of cookies waiting for company because Greeks have a philosophy called philoxenia, which is love of the stranger. So basically when a stranger comes to our door, before we even ask who they are, we invite them in, we put down a plate of cookies or kolokitho kiftadis or whatever we have, and we have them eat, and then we'll talk to them about why they're actually at our house. So, <laughs> so these are, so at this point, I would bake them in the oven for about half an hour, and they, I want them to get a little bit brown on top. If you have a convection oven, this is a great time to, to put on your conduction function, and, um, and then they're ready to go. So, super easy. <laughs> All right, any other questions about the zucchini patties? What? I haven't personally, but the, yeah, like you can make them with, I would say they would be fantastic with yellow squash, like yellow summer squash or butternut squash, um, carrots, you know, kind of anything like that. I haven't, I think they would be beautiful if you tried them. I think beets would work really well too, like they're really, yeah, I think that would be beautiful. So I would, I think that's something to to try, and it'd be great. And potatoes too, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So um, two years ago, for Masters of Taste, I made 400 of them, and, um, and yeah, and so I baked them all. I made them. Um, I used. No, I cooked them. To, I took. I cooked them um, two days before. Um, so I used my food processor. I used you know gigantic strainer, and um, I I made everything ahead of time. I I, I baked them off ahead of time and, and put them in big tin foil um, containers, and then um, stuck them in the oven. And because you don't have once you bake them the first time, you just need to bring them up to temperature, and then they're perfect. So they don't have to be piping hot like they would if they were fried. They wouldn't keep as well. Um, but baking them kind of makes it so they're easier to, to make ahead and have on hand for when you um, need to serve them. Any other questions? Okay, so now I'm gonna make my second favorite dish um, from the cookbook. And this is called, um, in the cookbook it's called shrimp santorini. Um, it's also traditionally called shrimp saganaki. Um, saganaki, not the cheese, but the is a type of dish um, in, it's also a type of fried cheese, but um, dishes in Greece when you're there that are called saganaki. There's mussel saganaki, shrimp saganaki. Um, it's a it's a type of dish that is um, roasted tomato, like roasted tomato based. So the most common is the shrimp saganaki or shrimp santorini. I call it shrimp santorini because the first time I had this dish, I was in Santorini. I was in Fira, which is the main city, and I was sitting on a patio overlooking the sea at a beautiful sunset, and I had this beautiful bowl of roasted tomatoes and shrimp that I really enjoyed. So that was my inspiration for making this dish. And I, so we're gonna start out by sauteing some onions. I think today um, with Melissa's, we're um, using the hatch onions, which are fantastic. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of, oh, yeah, great, salt. I like to cook intuitively, but with salt, I am a little more measured. So you have your one finger, your two fingers, your three fingers, um, so you know how much you're putting in. And you can use sea salt. I prefer diamond kosher salt. It's just um, whatever you have in your kitchen and whatever you like to cook with. Christina, um, we have a question on YouTube. Oh, yeah. I'm like, where is that voice coming from? <laughs> um, Hello. What activities or special things do Greeks tend to do on birthdays to we, celebrate? We dance, we eat, we um, in Crete on birthdays, my uh, my family makes raki, which is a bit different from Turkish raki. So raki 
in Crete is very much like grappa in Italy. After my family makes their wine for the season, they take all the mash from the grapes, they distill it, and they make this gasoline type moonshine <laughs> called raki. So if you're in Crete on a birthday, <laughs> they're just gonna put that bottle down on your table and you're gonna be drinking raki all night. <laughs> Yeah, see, I mean, yeah, every, yeah, now they've tried to regulate it, but it, it has not worked. <laughs> it is. Yeah, and, and they really trick you because most of the time they store it in water bottles. So if you go, like, if I go into my grandmother's house, my uncle will tell me which is the water and which is, like, the raki. Now they've started taking the labels, the water labels off of the raki, so you know, but we've all had, like, every Greek person has had that mix up where you're going for the water and you take a big sip and it's Rocky instead, and it's just, um, it's, it's alarming. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, opa, exactly. Well, in Crete, in Crete they say yamas as well, so yamas. Um, so I've got my onions going. Um, you just, you want them to be translucent. You want them to, you know, to lose some of their moisture. I'm gonna add my garlic. Um, again, I love cooking with Melissa's products because their peeled garlic is super convenient. When I'm cooking like five entrees at once, I don't want to spend a half an hour peeling every individual clove of garlic. So it's nice when it comes already peeled for you. And then when I, um, when I chop it, I really, again, I liked um, where my grater was. I like using um, kind of like a, like a zester or a, a very fine grater to grate my garlic. Um, I think the flavor's a lot better and the texture is really, really nice. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. So I am going to now add these beautiful tomatoes. Um, we're so lucky because it's summer and tomatoes are in season. So with these blue, beautiful, beautiful heirloom tomatoes. If you're making this dish out of season and you can't, there's two things I would do because I make this all year round, but I try to look, if you don't have beautiful like big heirloom tomatoes that you can get at, at the market. Um, what I would do next is I would see if there are heirloom cherry tomatoes. Um, heirloom cherry tomatoes have such a great taste and they are a, of a pretty good quality all year round. Um, if you really can't find any good tomatoes, then using a good quality canned tomato would be permissible in this dish, um, but really just try to go for something good and fresh. So we're gonna cook the tomatoes until they start releasing some of their juices. And then we're gonna add, I like things spicy. Um, there's not a lot of heat spicy in Greek food, but there is some, so we're gonna add a few dried chili flakes. I like, I like things with a little bit more of a kick. And then um, we're gonna have some Greek oregano. If you don't have Greek oregano, um, you can use whatever oregano you have. Um, it is slightly different, but still phenomenal. So we're gonna add our oregano. And then this is all gonna kind of slowly cook down into a really wonderful sauce. And it's something that if I'm making it for my pop-ups, um, I'll kind of put it on the stove and I'll put it at a really low heat and I'll just let the flavors you know, really slowly cook and mingle together. So if you do have some time, um, it's really worth doing. Um, if you don't have a lot of time, this is, you know, higher heat and going more quickly is completely fine. And then I'm going to add my shrimp. Um, before I add them, I'm going to season them with salt and pepper. And if you want to get fancy, you could actually add a little bit of lemon zest and garlic, um, depending on what your, what your taste is. I think, um, I love writing cookbooks and I love seeing how people interpret my recipes because, um, because everyone's taste and everyone's inclinations are different. The first time I make a recipe, I always try to follow it by the book and do everything as the book says. And then I like to see how it tastes and how it came out. And then I like the second time and the third time putting my own spin on things. So this is how I'm doing this. And then when they're all seasoned, I'm going to just put the shrimp on top. If 
These are beautiful shrimp, by the way. Any questions so far? All right. <laughs> You've had it. So, so Faye and Yuki here are amazing. I met them over a year ago at an event we did at the St. Sophia Church. Um, Peter Menaki, who is a phenomenal Greek chef up in Toronto, came and did a wonderful dinner. And um, so Faye and Yuki here introduced me to Robert, and that's how I got to know all you guys. And, um, but they came to one of my pop-ups where I was making this, and um, they were lucky, and I was lucky to have them there, and they were able to taste this at my house. Um, I also, if you have like earthenware cooking, um, like earthenware cooking bowls, I love um, putting it in there to bake. So if you don't have a, like a big oven, because we're gonna put this in the oven, if you don't have an oven safe, um, a, like a pan like this, um, you can do it, you know, in whatever um, so, um, frying pan you have, and then you can turn it out into something that you can put in an oven, like a 9 by 12 um, baking pan, or if you have something like an earthenware pan, um, we have these wonderful tagines we brought back from Morocco, and I love using the base of those because um, they look pretty, and um, I put this, I turned this out in there and make individual portions. So at this point, I'm going to add my olives. Olives are optional. If you don't like olives, you don't have to put them in, but I really like them. So these are beautiful Kalamata olives. And then the feta cheese. And if people try to tell you that fish or seafood and cheese doesn't go together, um, don't believe them because it totally does. And this dish, I mean, you ate this dish. I think, I hope you all enjoyed it. Um, it's delicious. We're going to do that. And then at this point, we would put this in the oven to bake for about 10 minutes until the shrimp are cooked through. And then when you pull it out, you're going to garnish it with this parsley. And then you have this beautiful dish called shrimp santorini. And I mean, really, how long did that take us? I mean, it would take 20 minutes. And, um, and then you're, you're done with a, a beautiful dish to present to your guests. Thank you. Any other questions? 